Hello everyone, it is I, the Onesie here, and welcome to Computer Building Simulator. I <clears throat> I saw Jack do this, and I was very, very curious. Unfortunately, yeah, it is like very, very early stages, like very basic. But it still has basically the essentials of what um to do when you actually try to build a computer. But yeah, like, I just saw Jack play this, and it, I just had this urge, it's like, I feel like building out a computer now. Of course, with the current job I have, I cannot do that at the moment. I, I don't get quite enough, even though, well, I would love to, honestly. Because one, I like to be a little less stressed about all, this, all that situation and everything. Two, be able to save, because I like to save. And three, occasionally spoil myself a little bit. You know, the usual. But, <clears throat> I just saw Jack play this and just, uh, I needed to at least have a go at this. I had a bit look at the controls and things like that just to like, have a gist around her or any, and everything. But yeah, like, shift is crouch for some reason. You would think it's control. These rotate the case back and forth. And, wait. And I shows up the inventory. Okay, so first off, obviously you're gonna need a case. I don't quite know what this case is. Hold on. Ah. Uh, okay. I have a feeling it's a cool master of some sorts, something like that. The top bit seems pretty familiar, and the little vents, but I'm not too sure. It's a pretty big tower as well. I think it's a, well, as you can see for the little ones, um, other ones, that's what, well, basic, why is there a keyboard picture in front of that one? Huh. Well, yeah, that's what you would call, call a mini tower. These are pretty much medium sized towers. Big empty room. So I guess this is like medium to large tower, which, well, depending on what you want to do, this is certainly a way to go to. But first, obviously when you get, um, well, your case and everything, you have to research all your parts, seeing like, um, well obviously depending on which tower size, you're gonna have to find the right motherboard and like, also depending which motherboard you want as well because as you get the motherboard, you have to get the parts for it and see if they're compatible and then you have to get a power supply, see if it supplies everything and um, hard drives. It's, it sounds a little complicated, but. At once you get your head around it, it's actually not too bad. So, yeah, first I'm going to unlock those. Because that's where the CD drive goes. Well, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever um, you get. Or you don't get them at all. Up to you. So, yeah, once you get the case and all the parts and everything, usually, like, stuff like the standoffs and, um, some other stuff. Miscellaneous. Yeah, the standoff... Uh, drive covers, side panels, thermal paste, I.O. shield, they generally come with the parts so you don't need to worry about things like that. So let's get into it and begin the build. So yeah, insert the standoffs in the correct positions of your motherboard depending what it is. But tell me about the size of this, I think it's a large motherboard, well a normal ATX board, which should be that. Huh, pretty blue. Hmm. Okay, what I usually do is just... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Open up the CPU socket. I'm trying to fix... Uh... Hmm. I'm not that good at like looking at something and figuring it out when it comes to motherboards and things like that. Obviously, it's an Intel because AMD doesn't usually do um, do the latch um, thing. But... Uh dummy CPU. Okay, when you install in the CPU, there's usually a little triangle in one of the corners. Yeah, you usually have to line up with, well, oh wait, uh, let me just, yeah. When um, you're about to mount it, there should be like a little triangle down here as well, basically indicating um, where to put your CPU. So once that is done, you do a little bit of thermal paste and then you close it. Let it go through its whole process. Yep. Okay. I think it auto screws in. Yeah. Um, usually when it comes to Intel motherboards, there's usually this little plastic cover 
in the CPU socket. You can, I'm like, yeah, put your CPU um, down, thermal paste it, and then um, when you put the latch on top, don't be scared if you're putting on too much pressure because eventually the plastic cover will break off, your CPU will be fine, but it's only, I'm um, like, it, the only reason why it does that is so it can really, really secure it in and like not move whatsoever. So don't be too scared putting in too much pressure, but you're, it's okay to back off if you think it's too much. Okay, now, uh, get the easy stuff out of the way. Put in the RAM. Okay, the RAM is usually color um, coordinated, you could say, with like, um, whatever you have in the black one, you have to have the same RAM in the other black one and vice versa with the blue. But if you want, you can have all the, um, all four the same because, well, it will look a little odd if you have like different RAMs going here and there. Okay, um, okay power supply, 500 watts. Usually, that's a usually really, really small power supply. Like, I think mine actually has. I can't see it at the moment. Um, the window panel, um, window panel of my computer doesn't quite cover the power supply, but I think mine's an 800. Not much um to power for my computer, but like it's enough. But for a computer of this size, 800 or above, I reckon. Well, obviously, depending on which graphics card, how many hard drives, um, CD drives, if you're gonna have liquid cooling and fans, it really just depends how you, how far you want to go. Oh, a GTX 680 Direct, two gigabytes, huh? A rather small. That is not a small huh? <laughs> GPU. That is much larger than I thought. Oh boy. Were 680s like this? I don't know. I, I would think they would be a lot smaller, not that big. God. Um. Oh shit! I just forgot a crucial part. Um. Stock cooler. Now, usually, like, with um the stock coolers and things like that, you don't have to worry too much about the thermal paste because, well, um, usually the cooler itself has um a thermal paste layer already on top of it. So, like, depending on which cooler you get, like brass, nickel whatever well it's kind of okay for having contact um well metal uh, on metal contact it's just without the thermal paste the heat will not be transferred to the cooler so efficiently so well have so having the thermal paste your um your cpu will be well be able to release its heat much much better which is recommended, honestly. <laughs> well, also, depending on what you do, if you just do standard gaming, browsing the internet, should be all right, just not full on hardcore, obviously. No overclocking with that as well, unless you're really, really lucky, of course. But um, for now, oh yeah, that's right. Once you install the motherboard, there's a little thing called the IO shield, which generally protects all the plugs and things like that. So like when you go plug something in, you ain't jamming it into the um, motherboard, which can damage it. There's like yeah. So the I/O shield is there to shield it, like it says. Um, okay, what else is there? Yeah, this is all the parts. Um, hard drives. That's do 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 do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can put some in the bottom, but for me, honestly. A case like this, I would try to get rid of that. It'd be good if I can get rid of a couple of those, so I only have two. And install some sort of, um, a reservoir for a liquid cooling, so I could water cool both GPUs. And somehow, or either get um, the CPU on its own loop, or join in the loop. So it's all one cooling system. But, that's really my take of it. Like. I have never built a liquid cooling system, except for a CPU liquid cooling, but that came in in one piece, so it was easy. But I plan to make a custom loop myself, hopefully this year-ish, which will cost a lot, unfortunately, but with time and saving, I will eventually get there, and that will make a one fantastic video, in my opinion. Okay, so what else is there? Where else can I put the thermal paste? Unless this is just a spare. Maybe. Okay, simple fans. Well, install that one there, that one there. Is there a fan at the front? There is no fan at the front. Oh, wrong way. Can I install fan at the front? Huh. 
Okay. We are... We are one fan space short, apparently. Unless... Yeah. Yeah, one fan space short. Huh. That's a little odd. Okay, uh... Get one drive in there. Yep. I generally put them on the top anyway, so... Oh, no. Drive cover... Doot, doot. Yeah. Okay. Might as well lock those back in. Okay, now the drives are secured. Those ones are... Well, by the looks of it, they're just push and locked in. Okay, anything else? Anything else? Um... I guess I can put on... Yeah, this back panel. Okay. Oh, okay. So this back panel, the reason why it has its little bit here is so when you finally get to the cable managing bit, which can be a... Oh, crap, that's right. Uh, I actually need the <laughs> side panel off for now. But yeah, that little bit was like for all the loose cables around the back just going all over the place. So like people, um, like he can have it neatly all here and everything and people generally don't see that. Unless like you make a window panel and you want people to look at your cables and things like that. Which is generally not what people do but there are people out there that do it so yeah. Now let's get to cabling. Okay. <clears throat> generally the first thing you're supposed to do is connect this big one which is the 20 to 24 ATX um, pins which is well obviously the power of the main motherboard which yeah controls basically everything else and the one after that you want you would want to connect these well the CPU fan which actually might be that uh, fan cable oh no that's the wrong one okay well it's either or really but I think that one there is the main fan um, input and that's a secondary and there should be another for that one but, uh, that one lights up so I guess that's it yeah so yeah that one connects to that one there's generally like three or, or, or more just depending on which motherboard you, you get okay now move on to the graphics cards wait let me just take a little look around Making sure everything is all good. Forgot that. Uh, I don't quite remember this one, but... Oh, okay, there we go. There's generally a plug for every single bit, except for some bits, of course, which, yeah, like... Generally, they are labeled, so you um, kind of know what to look for. But at the same time, you just have to be careful. Ugh. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the graphics cards. These ones have an 8-pin and a 6-pin, so... Can, can I... Can I click on use? Oh, wait. Wait, cabling, yeah. Why won't you let do this? Why won't you do this? Hmm. Give me a moment. I'm just going to do the hard drives and all that first. Okay, uh, such a power for each one. Again, this power supply is not going to be able to supply all of this, in my opinion, unless these are like very low, very like low, low power requirements so, and things like that. But if they work, then great, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought so. Okay. Okay, come on. Come on, GPUs. Why won't you plug for me? What you want for me? Okay, let me just unmount you then. Remount. Have to go to inventory again. Remount. KU in. Cabling. There we go. Eight. Six. And mount. Okay, do that and cabling eight and six now that is actually pretty much your fully built computer it's not that complex you don't want to do that though you don't want to face your cables into another fan that will make a lot of noise and not the good kind but yeah this is actually generally what you usually do to build a computer just yeah some cable ties here and there push it aside might be better if like 
if only you could actually manage this, manage the cable yourself. So like um, oh, damn bugger. Ah. Okay, let me just click over here. Okay, usually you would push the cables through. Um, okay, these little hole bits here, like yeah, like those um those cables there. Usually, like all the power supply um cords and things like that, go through here, muddle around here, and then go to their designated points and things like that. For hard drives, it's really really easy because they can be set up like this, just like. The um, pow um SATA powers and the SATA um cables themselves they're pointing generally away from the display um display side panel, so <clears throat> Ugh, lost my voice there for a second, but yeah, like that is generally how you build a Caputo. Okay, that's that's annoying. Uh. But yeah, this is like very early access. Um, well, not access. Um, very early on in its development and everything. So there is a lot to improve on there, on here. But this is really good for like people, I guess, like that miss computer building, um, building and just can't do it at the moment, and they can kind of relieve some of that pressure. But it's not quite the same. Because, well, yeah, the game does it automatically for you and things like that, but, like, once you know how to build a computer, you generally are on your way to build fantastic computers yourselves. Wait, why won't you let me mount it? Mount. There we go. But, yeah. So, yeah, that is a basic computer with, like, stock cooling, not much um, parts, just, like, hard drive, CD, um, fan, RAM, GPUs, power some other fans and that's basically it not much to be involved with something like this which huh, actually hold on um one two three four one two three four one one two one 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 is that all of it okay so overall according to this game this computer itself will cost about fifteen hundred dollars I'm not too sure if it's American or Australian or whatever country it came from, but yeah, like, press E to change project. I, I don't think there is any other projects anyway. But yeah, that is generally how you build a computer of that price. $1,500? Not too bad. You could probably, like, replace... Don't get a second... Six, um, 680. You could probably save up on that... Um, yeah, you could go for something $400, which might land you a GTX 800, or if you're even lucky, maybe a 900. I don't quite know the pricing at the moment. It just really, really depends. But Or you could just like spread it out, maybe not buy so much um, hard drives, maybe one or two. Uh, if you have decent internet, you can get rid of the CD drive. Um, mm, I, that would... Mm, then again, if you get a more powerful GPU, you might have to get a little more powerful power supply. But then again, you have two. Yeah, it's like a lot of planning and organizing involved. But in the end, you will be satisfied once it works. Like, once you build a computer, you go to turn it on, and you hear all the beeps going off. Um, like, well, not like alert beeps, but like the, um, the board startup beep. And you just like watch the display and see the BIOS light up and you're just like, I am happy. I am satisfied. That feeling I miss when I build computers. Which hopefully I could do again sometime soon. If not, eh, I'll still be hoping. But that is how you can build a computer. Give or take some details, I think. Generally. There's probably a lot of details I missed, like the PCI um, E slots and things like that. Pretty surprised there isn't like um, uh, little cards for the other um, slots and things like that. But yeah, like still, that is basic computering building thing. Close enough. But. I really, really hope they get more parts in the future. I might even be able to build my next computer in this game. Which will be funny, 
but they'll be, require a lot of a lot of programming and a lot of stuff to do but yeah I'm actually pretty pleased with this and for now thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and if you want to see more in the future subscribe to the channel as always I will see you in the next one bye for now